Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Roy Panetta. Uh, some of you may be aware of some of the new products that um, Dratic products have been released this year, but some, but you may not be aware of some of the new products that have already been released. So I'll start by giving you an overview of the new products that were released earlier this year, and then provide details of the new release products that are now becoming available. Uh, the router models released at the beginning of the year was the um, Vega LTE series, which included the Vega 2860L and Vega 2925L series routers. This was followed shortly after by the Vega BX2000 IP BBX. And there's some of the new additions to the product, um, Dratech product range are the Vega 2832 series, the Vega 2952, the Vega 3220, uh, and so I'll provide some more details for these um, later during the presentation. And then there's a new um, wireless access point that's going to be released soon. That's the Vega AP902. So we'll just start by looking at the um, Draytech uh, LTE routers. And details of the LTE routers were covered in a, a previous webinar uh, earlier this year. So. I'll just give you just a quick overview of this um, range of routers. So these routers have unlocked um, integrated uh, 4G uh, modem and accept SIM cards from the major service providers such as um, Telstra, Optus and Vodafone in Australia and Spark and Two Degrees and Vodafone in New Zealand. The SIM card slot includes a cover to prevent accidental removal of the SIM card as you can see pictured there on, on the slide. And here we have the Vega 2860 LTE series router and it's suitable for ADSL and VDSL2 applications. And some of the main features includes um, an integrated um, cut for FTD and LTE modem, ADSL and VDSL WAN, gigabit ethernet WAN, six gigabit ethernet LAN ports, uh, USB 2 for um, 4G LTE dongles or for file sharing, uh, 802.11n uh, Wi-Fi for the N model, and 32 landline VPNs and 16 SSL VPNs. <clears throat> and here we have a, a detailed view of the interfaces. Um, on the left-hand side, uh, this picture here we just show where the SIM card is uh, fitted into the rear of the router. And we have um, illustrated the other WAN connectivity options um, shown the, for the front panel. So you've got the ADSL, VDSL and USB ports. Then next we have the broadband version, which is the Vega 2925 LTE series. Some of the main features include, um, uh, similar to the 2860 is an integrated uh, CAT4 FTD uh, LTE modem, two gigabit Ethernet WAN interfaces, five gigabit Ethernet LAN ports, uh, a USB 2 port for 4G LTE dongles or for file sharing, and 802.11n wireless LAN, that's for the N model, and 50 LAN to LAN VPNs and 25 SSL VPNs. And here we've just got a, um, a detailed view of the interfaces. So again, on the left, we've got the, um, just shows where the SIM card fits into the rear of the router and also the other WAN connection points at the front and LAN ports. And some of the benefits of using uh, LTE series routers is that no external 3G or 4G USB modem is required. So we do not have the interoperability issues or disconnections due to an external mode of failing or accidentally being removed. So some of the applications for um, LTE series routers can be for um, outdoor or sporting events where internet access is, re is required for a short period. And another application um, could be for say holiday colleges uh, cottages rather, or you know, we a quick setup of a new or set a quick setup of a new branch office um, that's waiting for a DSL or Ethernet WAN connection. 
and another use is for caravans or mobile offices as well as you know there's many other possibilities as well so that's what i'll be saying about the lta series and um, the next model we'll look at briefly is the vega bx um oh, vega bx 2000 ip bbx so the vega bx 2000 was released earlier this year uh, it's an upgraded version of the older vega 2820 IP PBX, but it's based on the 2860 hardware platform. This means that all the router functionality of the Vega 2860 is available in this unit. The IP PBX features are similar to what you were accustomed to in the older model, the Vega 2820 IP PBX. And the AC Wi Fi version has just become available. I think it was just arrived a few weeks ago. And the Wi-Fi feature is similar to the um, bigger 2860 AC router. And this diagram just shows the front panel of the bigger BX2000. And on the left-hand side, we have two USB ports that can be used to connect to a 3G or 4G modem, to a shared USB printer. Uh, or a USB storage drive or a USB temperature sensor. And the USB interfaces can be used as um, two additional WAN interfaces, which is um, WAN 3 and WAN 4. So um, that's when a 3G or 4G USB modem is attached to these ports. And also we have an ADSL2 and VDSL2 interface, uh, which is WAN 1, that's on the left hand side and a gigabit ethernet port for WAN2 um, that can be used for NBN connections. And then next to that, we've got six gigabit ethernet LAN ports. On the uh, right hand side, we have a FXS port for an analog um, telephone and the FXO port can, be, can accommodate two incoming uh, PSDN lines. And here we just got to just have a list of the um, router features of the Vega BX2000. And some of these I've mentioned earlier, and these are the quad WAN with VDSL2, ADSL2 modem, gigabit WAN, two USB WAN ports. Um, and these can be configured for single WAN use or multi WAN mode and can be um, in low balance or failover. Uh, it supports about 50,000 NAT sessions and also um, support is a standard firewall, quality of service functions, as well as um, 32 VPN tunnels and 16 SSL VPN tunnels. So it's basically the same as the bigger 2860. And also a smart monitor can monitor up to 50 nodes and it can also be managed by using bigger ACS SI. The Wi-Fi version supports both the um, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi bands. That's in the bigger BX 2000 AC. And on the uh, PBX side, um, there's a listing there of some of the PBX features, and these are you can set up to 50 extensions, um, connect 12 SIP trunks and two PSDN trunks. You can also cust create cust eight custom trunks, which um, lets you set up a third party SIP service or SIP device that's registered um, to the bigger BX2000. Uh, it's set up as an extension, but um, it can work as a trunk. In this way, you can expand the number of trunks you can use. And other features include um, IP PBX wizard, um, hunt groups, auto attendant, music on hold, user prompts, uh, digit map function, speed dial and virtual fax functions. So all of these features are you know, probably suited for a small business who needs a sort of low cost um, PBX solution as well as um, you know, a firewall functionality. And here we've got the, um, some of the configuration pages and um, here we've got the uh, IP PBX uh, menu that's shown here. And there's five main menu options here. And these being, um, I don't know if you can just see them listed there, you'd see extension, 
where you set up the phone extensions, uh, trunks, dial plan, PBX system, and PBX status. So I'll just quickly just go th through to some of the details of those menu options. So we can set up about 50 extensions, and this is the um, uh, configuration page in the PBX. It just shows you for one up to 50 um, options you can set up, or extensions rather. And here you can see the the available options for setting up an extension. So at the top you can see it allows registration from the LAN as well as from the WAN or VPN connections. Down below you put your user details and which um, SIP account is going to be using or, or trunks. And the next option is trunks and here you can set up uh, 12 SIP trunks and two PSTN trunks just shown here. And the next one on the list is the dial plan. And the digit map lets you set up rules for outgoing phone calls. And the speed dial lets you set up shortcuts to <coughs> regularly called numbers and call barring, uh, lets you block certain types of phone calls. So, you know, pretty standard features. And the next major option in the, um, the menu structure is the um, PBX system. And you can see there's a lot of options here. And um, so here we can set up punt groups, uh, voicemail, and set up the office hours so that um, it can be used in conjunction with the auto attendant, um, which will automatically answer and direct phone calls to the required extension or hunt group. In the prompt maintenance uh, section, which is um, about three quarters of the way down the list, um, you can set up uh, custom user prompts that are used for the auto attendant and also have music files for the music on hold feature. And the last menu option for the PBX function is um, the PBX status. And here you can view the phone calls and um, have fax logs and also monitor the extensions, which are shown on the bottom right there. <clears throat> so here you can see which phone extensions are online and they're shown in green, the active ones. And the phones that are switched off or are disconnected are shown um, as offline and in red writing. So I won't show any more details um, under the BX2000 since we've got limited uh, time today. But I'll show you just a, a brief video produced by Draytech that summarizes um, some of the topics that I covered. So the vi video is available on YouTube on the link that's shown on this page. So. Um
Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video and found it informative. Um, I'll now pass over to Edward, who is going to introduce the first of the new products that have just been released. And there's a question from someone sent to us regarding um, video cell devices being certified uh, for NBN. Um, at the moment, um, there's not many products that are, um, are suitable for NBN, and Draytech um, uh, does meet um, uh, most of the requirements. And it's currently undergoing testing by NBN Co. And um, we have got a statement of um, uh, of compliance, you know, which we can send out to you. But um, at the moment, we've got many people using um, Draytech devices for you know video cell and um, you know, fiber to the home uh, type setups, and uh, there's been no issues so far. So. Um, but uh, if you didn't need official certification, we can probably send something out to you. So anyway, but um, I'll pass you on to Edward, and he'll discuss the, um, the new model routers that have been just released uh, this month, and some of them in the press have been released this week and the coming week. So uh, I'll pass you to Edward now. I will start with Vigor 2830 series router. There are two models available. These are the Vigor 2832 and the Vigor 2832N routers. It is based on a new hardware. The front panel layout is different from for this router. It is a multiple WAN ADSL router with a one ADSL2 plus interface, one gigabit internet, one interface, and a USB port for 3G, 4G USB modem. It is also has a 4G gigabit Ethernet LAN ports. This router is an updated version of the older Vigor 2830 router. So many of the features will be similar to the older mo model, including firewall with content security management, WAN, and VPN connectivity. When you log into the router web interface, you have the similar dashboard with a quick access menu. Here we have a list of the features. This include multi one connectivity, four IP subnet, four gigabit LAN ports, IPv6 support, SPI firewall and content security management, quality of service, 32 VPN tunnel, 10 SSL VPN tunnels, two USB port. And it can be used with a smart monitor to monitor up to 30 node nodes and can be managed by Vigor AC SSI. There are some enhancements when compared to the older model. One of these is the port redirection and port Open port profile have been increased to 40 as compared with the 20 for the older model. Another enhancement in is in the web portal setup. You have the option of not using user management for particular subnet. There are other enhancements such as VPN load balance, SSL, VPN tunnel, and etc. Another route, new router model just released is the Vigor 2952 router. It is a dual WAN security firewall router designed for medium-sized business requiring powerful business network features. This router is fitted with two gigabit Ethernet WAN interface with one WAN selectable as a SFP port for optic fiber module installation. These are the two USB ports that support 4G, a 3G, 4G mobile dongle. One of the USB port is a USB 3 version. Here we have a list of some fit of the feature. This include SPI firewall and content security management, quality of service, 100 VPN tunnels, 50 SSL VPN tunnels, 
two USB port. The router also include uh, central VPN management, central AP management, as well as a central switch management, which is a new feature. It can also be used in high availability mode where two routers can be configured in master slave arrangement to provide redundancy and high availability. It can be used with smart monitor to monitor up to 100 nodes and can also be managed by Vigor AC SSI. Central switch management feature can cover in another webinar that uh, let it lets you centrally manage bigger switch from a central console. It also easy dry tech vigor switch deployment. It can monitor with switch and LAN client status and can be used for maintenance and diagnostic purposes. Currently supported vigor switches are shown here. These are the G1241, G2260, and the P2261. Here we have the dashboard for this router. On the left, you can see the menu options. The last new router we will look at is the Vigor 3220. This is a one a quad one enterprise level security firewall suitable for uh, any medium sized business. The Vigor 3220 router is fitted with a one gigabit in, uh, internet one port, four gigabit one interfaces, and two USB port for 3G, 4G mobile dongles. It also a uh, dedicated DMC port can be used to connect servers or computers that need to be exposed to the internet without compromising the internal LAN security. The console port is uh, provided for the network administrator to access the CLI for diagnostic purposes. Here we have a list of some of, some of the features. This include the SPI firewall and content security management, quality of service, 100 VPN tunnels, 50 SSL VPN tunnels, and two USB ports. The router also include the central VPN management, central AP management, as well as central switch management, which will be available in the near future. It can be used with a smart monitor up to, to monitor up to 200 nodes and can also be managed by uh, Vigor AC SSI. Here we have the dashboard for this router. On the left, you can see the menu options. You will notice that many of the features are similar to that of the Vigor 2952 router that I showed you earlier. The last new release is the Vigor AP902 wireless access point. This is scheduled to be released soon. This is an update version of the AP900 with a 802.11 AC, Wi-Fi supporting concurring 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band bands. The 5 gigabit LAN ports can be divided into into two segments, which four LAN ports in segment A and one LAN port in segment B. Some of the wireless features include uh, multiple SSID, universal repeater mode, bridge mode, point to point or point to multi points, and WDS. Airtime fairness provides equal airtime to Wi Fi client, improving effective wireless speeds. Other features are roaming and rogue AP detection. If your network requires a uh, several Vigor AP900 units, then they can be certainly managed and monitored. The AP management client in Vigor AP902 will communicate with a central AP management feature that is available in the business grade routers such as 
Vigor 2860 and Vigor 2925 series. To the central API management console in Vigor routers, the network administrator can define the Vigor AP 902 SSID, encryption rule, MAC address control, upload and download limits, as well as view of the status on installed Vigor 902 access point. Uh, AP load balancing through multiple AP can be enabled through central AP management. This manage, manages the wireless traffic through multiple Vigor AP902 access point to provide, provide smooth data flow with enhanced efficiency. 